right now at noon, it is the day we've all been waiting on, Election Day 2024. People across the country are heading to the polls, exercising their right as Americans to cast their ballots. All eyes across the world are on the presidential election with Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump. The race for the White House couldn't be any tighter. We are covering Election Day from every angle. Our team of reporters stationed across the tri-state area, covering the big races and monitoring the precincts looking into any issues that may arise. We start with a look at the presidential race. Elijah Westbrook is live on the Upper West Side with more on that. Elijah. Hey there, Cindy. Good afternoon to you. Well, I can tell you it's seemingly been an active afternoon here on the Upper West Side. Uh, right now we're standing just outside PS 452 here where we've been seeing an active flow of people going in and out, of course, casting their ballots. This, as the race for the White House, all comes down to this big day. Election day is on, and now there's just hours left until the polls close. This as the candidates, former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris, wrapped up their final pitches to voters Monday night. America is ready for a fresh start, ready for a new way forward. As your president, I will fight for you every single day with every breath in my body. But now the attention focuses on what could happen today. Trump is expected to cast his ballot later today in Florida before linking up with his running mate, J.D. Vance. The two are scheduled to attend a watch party at the Palm Beach Convention Center. Harris and her running mate, Governor Tim Walz, voted during the early election period. Harris is set to participate in seven radio interviews airing in each battleground state before she and Walz hold an election night watch party at her alma mater, Howard University in Washington, D.C. Definitely abortion rights have the most, honestly, so I feel like there's a lot of other health care that ties into that. I think there's a lot of division in this country. I'm concerned, and, you know, I want what's best for the American people and for this country, and um, we'll see. And so back out here live, uh, overall, so far, so good here on the Upper West Side. Now, if you're someone who is expected to vote at some point today, of course, be sure to check your polling location before heading out the door. And if you plan on voting later in the day, uh, it's always a good idea to get to the polling site at least an hour before it closes. As the latest at this time, from the Upper West Side, Elijah Westbrook, CBS News, New York. Elijah, thank you. In New York City, more than 1,300,000 people cast their votes as of 9 a.m. this morning. That includes early voting numbers. According to the city's Board of Elections, Brooklyn topped the list with more than 400,000 votes. Now, besides the race for the White House, voters will also decide who controls Congress. Right now in the Senate, 47 seats are held by Democrats, while Republicans have 49 seats. There are four independents, but three of them caucus with Democrats, so Democrats retain control of that chamber. Republicans are in control of the House of Representatives, 220 Republicans to 212 Democrats. But races that could reshape the makeup of the House are happening right here in New York on Long Island and in the Hudson Valley. Natalie Dudridge joins us live in Terrytown with those details. Natalie. Well, hi there, Cindy. We are outside Terrytown Village Hall. So far, no long lines, although we have seen a steady flow of voters here. Now, the mood, uh, some anxiety, some nerves, some hope. Uh, a lot of people telling us they are just ready for this all to be over. They're ready to see the results, especially in these close, close races. Anxious, anxious. I was looking at selfies that I took and I was seeing like a stress vein popping out of my forehead, but hopeful. Positive, but I'm on the edge of my seat. On edge for tight races, including the 17th District, which covers Rockland and Putnam counties, parts of northern Westchester and southeastern Dutchess. Due to redistricting, it's now a swing district battleground between Mike Lawler, who voted this morning, and Mondaire Jones, who voted early on October 26. To Long Island, several other key races could sway the balance of power in Congress. The 4th District, where Republican incumbent Anthony D'Esposito hopes to hold off Democratic challenger Laura Gillen. The pair last faced off in 2020. 
2022 when D'Esposito won by a margin of about 3%, becoming the first Republican to represent the district. I feel great. I mean, the enthusiasm out here is tremendous. We've knocked on over 300,000 doors, um, talked to voters, and we're feeling a lot of good energy. In the third district, Democrat Tom Swazi, who won a special election in February to replace George Santos, is now defending his seat against Mike LePetri, a former New York State Assemblyman. And in the first congressional district, incumbent Republican Nick LaLota is facing former CNN anchor John Avalon. Some voters still on the fence right up to the last minute. Kind of up in the air with the decision. I like one candidate, you know, um, but I don't like his behavior, but I like his outcome. And that's important. Others have no doubts. I will vote for Kamala Harris, and I think that it matters. I think it's important for my children and my grandchildren. Now, a lot of voters we've been speaking to say they have voted early. In fact, in this district, District 17, more than 204,000 people cast their vote early. So we'll see what the rest of the results from today bring, Cindy. We're live from Terrytown in Westchester County. Natalie Dudridge, CBS News, New York. Natalie, thank you. And a lot of big races on the ballot. New Jersey polling places already seeing long lines. Let's get out live to Christina Fan in Fort Lee, New Jersey. Hi, Christina. Hey there, Cindy. While voters across New Jersey feel the weight of the decision at hand, that is perhaps why we saw record-breaking early voting numbers. More than 1.1 million people have cast their ballots so far in the Garden State. That momentum and enthusiasm carrying into this morning. We saw a very bustling polling center behind us. Many voters we spoke with consider this the most consequential election of their lifetime. The line of voters out the door in Fort Lee, New Jersey, moments after polls opened at 6 a.m. First timers and old timers, young and old, saying a gamut of issues brought them to the ballot box this year. Nationally, the southern border is a big issue. Inflation prices are through the roof. Energy. I would say definitely women's rights and the economy. Gotcha. And sir, what about you? Uh, I'm going to say the economy and women's rights, but more importantly, democracy. The tightest race is in the 7th Congressional District, where first-term Republican incumbent Tom Kane Jr. is trying to fend off Democratic challenger Sue Altman in a showdown that could have significant implications. Republicans need to hold on to the seat, among others nationwide, to retain control of their narrow majority in the U.S. House. In the U.S. Senate, where Democrats have the slightest of margins, Democrats are hoping former Senator Bob Menendez's seat remains blue. Democratic Representative Andy Kim and Republican businessman Curtis Bashaw are facing off for the open seat left vacant after Menendez was convicted on federal bribery charges. More than one in four registered voters in New Jersey have already cast their ballots before Election Day. I think this year is probably busier than I've ever seen. It. Voters say participation in the electoral process is critical. This is her first time voting ever. She just became a citizen this year. Uh, she's been in this country for 40 years as a legal resident. So, I mean, it's like a big moment for her to like vote. Now, in addition to those voting in person, we've seen a number of drivers coming here to drop off their mail-in ballots. Polls across New Jersey will close at 8 p.m. Reporting live from Fort Lee, New Jersey, Christina Fan, CBS News, New York. Christina, thank you. And since the polls opened this morning, we've had crews dispatched across the boroughs monitoring the voting process. Investigative reporter Masa Saidi joins us live outside a polling site in Whitestone, Queens. Masa? Hi there, Cindy. So there have been multiple reports of machines malfunctioning across different polling sites in Queens at our news desk, our crews. We have been all over this for you. I want you to take a look at what we saw about 35 minutes ago here inside PS 184. This woman trying to cast her ballot. We watched for at least 10, 15 minutes. The machine kept spitting it back out. She tells me it took 40 minutes for the machine to accept her ballot, but her vote did count. Now take a 
look at this video from earlier this morning at East Elmore Queens. We also had crews there. A poll worker told us that several machines were down. They sent out a technician, and the issue at that location has been fixed. The Board of Elections tells us that they have inspected all 290 sites in Queens. Now, despite all of these issues, listen to what this one voter told us earlier today. The voting experience was totally fine. It was seamless. Everyone pointed me in the directions I needed to go to, and they need everything. They did everything that they needed to do so I can vote properly, and it was good. So it was good for him because the machine that he had, obviously, that was one of the ones that was working. So right now we are waiting for a technician to come out here to PS 184 and fix one of the machines here. So it's going to take you about an hour, potentially. Make sure you're ready for that. And election officials tell, tell me that this is not rare. This happens during every high turnout election. But we're going to stay on this. And if you have any issues, please let us know. For now, that's the very latest in Queens. I'm Masa Saidi, CBS News, New York. Masa, thank you. And there are reports of voting problems in an important swing state of Pennsylvania. The Board of Elections in Cambria County, Pennsylvania, has filed a court order to extend voting hours after a software malfunction prevented the scanning of ballots. The Pennsylvania Department of State said it's in contact with the county to resolve the issues there.